All right, good morning, guys. I hope you guys are all doing well. You're staying safe and you're keeping those hands washed. All right, um, and also I appreciate whoever took my survey yesterday, it gave me tons of great feedback uh, in order for me to improve this distance learning process. And by doing that, uh, I'm gonna do some audio to cover this PowerPoint with you guys. It's not very long, won't be too taxing on your brain. So let's get right into it. So we're starting with standard 6.LS, 2.2. Um, it's determining the impact of competitive, symbiotic, and predatory interactions in an ecosystem. Today, we're going to hit only the symbiotic section of this standard. Um, we'll hit competitive and predatory interactions a little bit later. Um, the title of this presentation is Interactions in an Ecosystem. And then specifically, we're going to focus on our symbiotic relationships. So symbiosis, I'm sure it's a word that you guys have never heard before, but I'm going to break it down for you and break down the three separate categories that we're going to hit today. So the term symbiosis comes from the Greek language and it means living together. Um, and then the three categories of symbiosis can be broken down into a mutualism, parasitism, and then commensalism. So mutualism, it's essentially a win-win. Both organisms that are involved in this relationship have a benefit. So an example, um, there's a relationship between hummingbirds and flowers. Then I have a visual on the next slide that'll kind of break that down. But feel free to pause each slide of the PowerPoint in case you need to jot down some notes or anything like that. So our example here is hummingbirds have a mutualistic relationship with flowers. The bird drinks the nectar and then distributes the pollen to other flowers as it flies away. So the hummingbird's benefit is obtaining the nectar. And then the benefit for the flower is that when that hummingbird comes to the plant, it must grab some of that pollen as it's grabbing the nectar, and then it'll fly to another flower, and then it'll distribute that exact same pollen. So both of them are gaining a benefit there. So our next category is parasitism, which is where one benefits and then one suffers. So I'm sure you guys have heard of parasites before, um, but if you have not, I'll throw in some examples here. So parasites are organisms that live on or within another organism, and it's called a host, and they feed on their host. So in this relationship, the parasite benefits and the host is harmed. Tapeworms. Tapeworms are super common examples of parasites. They live inside an animal's digestive tract, and they consume nutrients that are meant specifically for the host. So here's what a tapeworm can look like. So the heads of a tapeworm have four large suckers and two rows of hooks to latch onto intestines. Um, that's where I got my photo from. So then we have some parasites such as ticks and lice that feed on the outer surface of a host. Other insects may lay eggs on a host, allowing larvae to feed on the host when they are born. So like I said, when you have a parasite, they feed on their hosts. They attach themselves and they feed. And that's essentially all they do. There's no benefit for the host itself. And then our last category is commensalism. So it's a type of symbiosis in which one species benefits and the other species neither suffers nor benefits from the association. It's kind of just a part of it. Doesn't really do anything. Doesn't really gain anything. It's just a part of it. Um, this relationship also exists between cattle, egret, or sheep. Moving on, so commensalism. So the grazing deer, they flush out insects from the grass, and then the starlings, which is the bird that's present in the picture, they eat on the insects. So deers can attract insects, flies, and things like that. Um, I know if, if you guys have been around that type of wildlife, bugs are kind of attracted to them. Um, so the starlings in this situation kind of fly to the deer, and it really just eats up the insects that float around the deer. Um, the deer is not affected here, nor does it truly gain a benefit. It kind of just is hanging out. Nothing is obtained by the deer in this situation. And the starlings are just grabbing whatever they can get by being near the deer itself. I mean, that's really all that I wanted to cover today. Um, so I'll attach a Google form to this document, um, and then I'll add some further directions there.